Standing film on Ramsey Clark. And, uh, it's entitled uh, Citizen Clark, A Life of Principle. Uh, we're really pleased to have uh, <coughs> Joseph C. Stillman in the house right now, and uh, I'd like to introduce you uh, to him, uh, Berkeley Joseph C. Stillman. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, um, it's been an incredible challenge to try to tell the story of an individual who has spent the last 50 years of his life fighting for the causes of peace, justice, and human rights. And Ramsey is one of those unique individuals who most of you, I'm sure, know. But uh, this particular project has been blessed with individuals who have helped to tell the story that he has so um, uh, incredibly courageously told uh, during his lifetime. On the first night of the uh, Selma to Montgomery March in 1965, Martin Luther King talked to Ramsey about being fearless, about having courage, and about how, as you'll see in this film, and I think that if there's a theme to this particular documentary that you're going to see tonight, it's about a fearless individual. Everybody that is in this film is a fearless individual. And if Ramsey were here with us this evening, he would want us to not celebrate the work that he's done, but to be fearless individuals as well. Um, I am so honored to have Alice Walker with us this evening an incredibly fearless person as well. And I'd like to uh, read something that she wrote that I think uh, really uh, is the example of the message of this film. She wrote, In this world of war, where peace seems elusive, and the war machine grinds relentlessly, how does one extend the integrity of peace? And I think this film, I hope, extends the integrity of peace. I'd like to welcome Alice uh, up here. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. This is a wonderful film. Joseph, I thank you so much for making the film. Everybody else who had anything to do with the film. Uh, however, I am not fearless. Uh, I, I really, um, I think we have to really, in a way, I mean, if he's fearless, that's great. I'm, you know, he sort of acts fearless. But I think it's important to just stop ourselves from thinking that we have to be fearless. Because uh, the point is that you should just be as fearful and scared as you can be and then just do it anyway. That's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. that is what it is. <laughs> and to the extent that I've had any courage at all, it was just knowing that I was up against absolute horror and that somebody had to do it and I was there. <laughs> you know? And so I really think that he actually shows that. I think Ramsey shows that. Uh, because some of those situations, you'll see for yourself. You would have to be uh, all you know, dead, really, to not be afraid, uh, because it's a scary world. I mean, they're out there bombing everything they can bomb. Uh, they're, they're treating children as if they're just nothing. Uh, you know, the disease factor is high. The fires are burning. The, you know, uh, and then everybody's lying. Uh, so whenever they're lying, you have to be afraid. You know, because either they don't tell them why that's going to basically do you that. Uh, so we keep going. And what I so love about this person, and uh, in fact, I, we were talking earlier uh, about uh, when Rams and I met. And I'm sure we've met on many different occasions, the way you do all of us in this room, I'm sure 
we're always meeting people on picket lines and in jail or somewhere. But you know, we met in Havana, and and what I loved about him in Havana was uh, that he was joyful. You know, he was having a great time with Fidel. I mean, those two, and he was he has a story about how Fidel and I were so happy because when when I came to Havana, I had all my books, and Fidel was a great reader, and he just stopped everything and wanted to read. He was sick of reading government reports. <laughs> but he and Ramsey had this wonderful report, which was so great to see, um, you know, in just American human beings, but especially in a white person, <laughs> you know, and a white man from Texas. I mean, he delighted me no end just from being a white man from Texas with courage and those ears. <laughs> <laughs> So there's so many reasons to celebrate this film, and I hope it goes around the planet. Because honestly, we have to present a better face of our, yes. of our country than we yes. yeah. The face of this country, can you, I mean, everybody here can imagine it all too well, but I mean, it is just horrible. I mean, it, it's just, oh, I mean, there are no words for it. For how how we look and yes. how mm -hmm. you know, it looks yeah. with the face that we are presenting and the way that, that almost nobody can even believe that someone like Ramsey exists from Texas. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I have a spiritual daughter who lives in Texas who lived there, and I went to great lengths to liberate her from that state. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they were killing her. You know, they were killing her spirit and mutilating her. Beautiful soul, and why? Why? Why did that happen to any of us? So I love this film, and I think that um, it is a great gift to us. It should encourage all of us uh, to be the best citizens of the planet that we can be. And it's too late to be just a citizen of a country. A citizen of the planet to be uh, in sync with the rest of creation, you know, how about noticing nature? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, just be afraid and just keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me present uh, Joseph C. Stoller. Thank you, sir. I was looking at that. Thank you, Mel, for doing this for 26 years, this, this festival. I forgot to mention <laughs> earlier that what you're seeing tonight is a work in progress. We've not finalized the color and equalized the sound and all the other things. We still have rights that we have to pay for and that we haven't. So I was hoping we are going to be done with this film by this time, but it looks like it's going to be another month or, or two, so my apologies for not having a perfect picture and sound here, but um, does anybody have any questions? I have. Yes. Um, will you please accept this uh, Grand Festival Award? <laughs> yeah. So if anything is going to happen, I'm going to be taking out some things. But, you know, I have been really fortunate in that in the last couple of months, for instance, 
the um, footage that you saw in Vietnam from Ramsey Reserve 1972. I got a phone call from the person that filmed that and said, I've got this incredible footage of Ramsey that I'd like to send you. And I just got that a month and a half ago. And then Gloria Lariva sent me 36 tapes from Bosnia that I've got within the last three months. So this has been an evolving project. Now, this film has been totally funded through donations. So we didn't have a bureau behind us or any kind of a financial entity. And so we would get a donation, we'd go out and film somebody, then we, it, it may take me two years to get a piece of footage uh, in Palestine, as an example. And that's kind of how we built, or how this film kind of came together. So it's, uh, it's been very organic in terms of its um, development and eventual, you know, um, storytelling. But, you know, everything is, everybody that's in this film is related to Ramsey or has been connected to Ramsey in one capacity or another. And I felt that that was really important because it wasn't just well-known people that, are, uh, that didn't know him, that were involved with him and worked with him, you know, over the years. Ramsey's been doing this for 50-something years. Well, I'd like to mention the one thing that was really missing for me, which is that he defended Pastor Eliza Tagrutimana at the International Criminal Tribunal on Rwanda. Right. Mm -hmm. And when he was convicted and sentenced, Ramsey told the New York Times and anybody else who was listening that the International Criminal Tribunal in Rwanda was war by any other means. Right. Yeah. You know, the, the, cho the choice, the difficulty was that Ramsey was involved in 27 major interventions. 27. I picked six. <laughs> Serbia, Vietnam, Panama, Palestine, and um, yeah. Iraq. And I could, either one of those six could have been a whole film by itself. So I really had to choose uh, which ones I could cover. And the other thing is that I initially started out uh, just trying to tell Ramsey's story. And I realized that I couldn't separate history from Ramsey because he was such an uh, integral part of that particular movement at that time. And so I had to go back and rethink about how do I tell his story in a way that puts it in the context of what was happening at that particular moment. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's been tricky to try to, to um, really assess the impact. I mean, what Ramsey's legacy will eventually be, um, uh, who can say? Uh, but the purpose really of this film is to inspire and to empower people to realize that, that uh, if they want to make a change in this government, they have to be involved, invested citizens. You know, Ramsey did not want us to celebrate him or his accomplishments. He wanted us to go out and do something. And that's really kind of the purpose, I think, of this film. I hope it's going to inspire people to become invested, engaged citizens. Yes, ma'am. I, I did an inspiring film, and it's being well made. Well made. I just wonder, uh, where is it slated? Where do you want to go? Well, uh, I, I hope that as many people as possible will get a chance to see this film. There's, there's five distributors that are interested in this film right now, which is great for us. We still have to raise money to finish it, but I'm really looking at the biggest exposure that it can have because, you know, I showed this at a college the other day, and I said, how many people do you know college Young people know who Ramsey Clark is. No, raise your hand. There were no hands, mm -hmm. except for the four professors that were there. Yeah. Uh, and and so I said, well, you know, you're the the smartest generation. You've got the greatest technology. You've got access to all this information. You have the ability to change the world. But you've got to be a critical thinker. You've got to ask the hard questions. This is a, is an example of a of the ultimate critical thinker who asked the hard questions and actually went to the places to get the answers. And if you want to be successful as a contributing member of humanity, then that's what you have to do. And then I had some really terrific questions for these kids afterwards. But, you know, it, aside from our generation, uh, who knows who Ramsey Clark is and what impact he's had? You know, who's going to be that next generation is going to take the baton that he started with 
uh, you know, uh, and, and carry on. And I, and I do see, you know, um, people like that that are coming, you know, the Chris Hedges and the Gloria Larivas and the Sarah Flanders and the, the Brian Beckers and all these other people that are out there uh, doing the work that Ramsey started. They inspired, they were inspired by him and now they're carrying it on. So, you know, I hope that this will um, be uh, an incentive to people that are sort of sitting on the fence. You know, particularly now, at this particular time in the history of this country, because for 50 years, really, Ramsey has fought against special interests and big money uh, and how it affects governance. And so we're seeing the ultimate example of that at this very moment. So um, that really is, uh, I hope, uh, going to be the message uh, to change, you know, the current direction that this country's headed. So both theatrical release and like cable and, and Well, I hope so. You know, if it, if it gets on HBO and one night, you know, three three million people will see it. So that's the kind of impact that I hope, or, or the kind of exposure that I hope it's going to have. But I don't know. You know, I'm just I'm just trying to tell Ramsey's story. Where it's going to go, it's going to go. Yes. Um, I personally thought it was very interesting and really inspirational film. Glad you made it. Um, during the later parts of the film, I was uh, a little unsettled at some moments because I thought that you were uh, indicating some contradictions in his positions without necessarily addressing them. Uh, for example, Serbia. Um, you ran a quote on the screen which referred to sanctions as a form of genocide and so forth. The only genocide that was occurring was the genocide of the Serbs against Kosovo. That was the only genocide that was underway. Um, and what this raises is the question of whether Ramsey uh, Clark always got the balance right. Well, yeah, that's a good, po a good point because, you know, um, I had people tell me, uh, why did Ramsey defend this person, or how could he justify this individual or this group? You know, and in Ramsey's eyes, it was never about um, a specific person. It was always about, uh, even though he was representing maybe a specific person, it was always about whether or not that person was entitled to be to a fair trial or, to, or for justice to be served because he felt like if we as a country are, are promoting um, democracy, you know, whatever that is, uh, it can't just apply to the ones that we select. And, and so he always sort of put himself in a position where it didn't look good what he was doing, but he felt that he, he was compelled to do it. So it was, you know, Bosnia was a, it was a really tough section actually to try to explain and try to go into depth. Like I said, it, it, any one of those six sections could have been a whole film in itself, and I had to do three minutes to try to have a summation of just exactly how he was involved. And the point was, was that uh, while he was out there uh, defending this, you know, 100,000 people were massacred, you know, and um, it, it's, it's like you can't, I don't think you can say that he doesn't have flaws or that he, he wasn't um, uh, right or wrong in one thing or another. He made mistakes, like everyone. Uh, but, you know, I don't think it's up to, I think it's up to history to judge what, whether or not what he did was right or wrong. I, I'm just trying to present the case and put it in a way that people can understand. The Palestinian section is a good example. Um, yeah, I did not initially go into the history of Palestine, and I got so many uh, questions about that later on uh, after the, I changed it, and they really appreciated that because a lot of them didn't know the backstory necessarily of that conflict. Uh, and uh, so, you know, it's like um, I, I just try to do the best I could to try to be able to clarify some of these really difficult. Um, scenarios that Ramsey found himself in. And um, it, it was, it's always tough to try to sort them out in a short amount of time. This film could have been, you know, three hours long. It's, 
98 minutes and it's at least eight minutes too long. Sure. So I'm, I'm going to have to you know, make a lot of difficult decisions in, in the next month or so, but uh, it is what it is right now. So, yes? I've seen uh, the film uh, twice in earlier versions. I think it's um, much improved, very exciting and, and wonderful. Congratulations. But uh, I found, I think, I'm not sure you can get away without referencing this period now. I found some catch emotionally in me about the kind of figure he represents in contrast to Trump and in contrast to uh, the you know attorney generals in the state of the state of our nation. And I'm just I just think there probably has to be something uh, because we wait for it, I think. And I know I know history keeps happening, time keeps going by, uh, but it's so central to the dilemma, I think. Well, so that's just a reaction. Sure. Well, no, I think it's a good point. You know, I think that the thing is, is that all these issues that Ramsey addressed were relitigating again. You know, <coughs> voting rights suppression, um, uh, LGBT rights, uh, the environment. I mean. Uh, we're, all these things that we thought were resolved are now being waters again and are now being fought all over again. And, and, and so we're starting kind of, it's a, you know, I asked Ramsey, speaking of Trump, I said, what do you think of Donald Trump? He said, not much. <laughs> and, I, and he said, he's trying to take Lady Liberty, tear her up in little pieces and throw her in the Hudson. But if uh, Congress does their job, they'll prevent him from doing that. He said, but it's up to us, or up to force our representatives to do their job, because it's certainly not going to be done by this president. You know, so uh, that's uh, I think that's uh, one of the things. But you know, Ramsey has not been uh, involved in Trump's since Trump was elected in anything that he's done, and so I kind of had to go back and think. Well, I have. It's about the movement of people against. Uh, things that are wrong with, within our system that that this film is about. It can be Trump, it can be whoever the next president is, it can be Bush. You know, I, I forgot to mention one other thing. That last three-minute um, summation of where we are as a country that Ramsey gave at the very end of the film. In 2005, I was doing a film about a returning Iraq veteran, and I spent an hour with Ramsey, and at the end of it, just as sort of an afterthought, I said, Ramsey, is there anything you want to say that you think is important? And he thought about it for a second, and he gave that three and a half minute piece wow. that you just heard. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have a place for it in that film, it was a different film. But about a year ago, I was cutting this film, and I thought, you know, there's something about the ending that, that I need to say, and I remember that interview, and I went back, this is 12 years ago, and I pulled that out and I thought this is a perfect way, in my mind, to encapsulate Ramsey's view about what we need to do as a gay citizen. So that's how that Indian County came about. Yes? Yeah, I was curious if Ramsey had any involvement with Afghanistan. Because in the film, you devoted a significant amount of time to Iraq War One, I, I think they call it Desert Storm. Right. Yep. But then I was kind of I was confused if you actually went into well I, I guess you actually did because I saw a date 2004. But I saw some of the was saying on the screen like in a trial. Yeah. And you didn't really explain what his involvement <laughs> was with that or if there was any involvement at all. Yeah. So two questions. Was he involved in Afghanistan? was going on this whole time and the explanation of, you know, the image of Saddam Hussein in the court. Sure. Well, yeah, he represented Saddam. He was one of uh, three international lawyers. The six Iraqi lawyers, there were nine of them all together. They were all assassinated. They were all killed during that trial. Ramsey's life was threatened every day mm -hmm. in the course of that trial. Um, he did. He went back into Iraq in 2003. You know, he led the, the movement to impeach Bush in 2003, um, and he was in Afghanistan. But again, you know, there were 27 different interventions that Ramsey was in, and I couldn't cover them all. I just had to pick and choose the ones that I felt were uh, 
what I felt. It, it also had to do with material. You know, I can't go, I'm not like CNN where I can just go and pick out everything I need. Uh, when Mark Luther King speaks, as an example, it's $500 a second for footage and you have to buy it in 30 second increments. And so if he speaks one second or, or 30 seconds, it's $15,000. And I have 250 clips in this film of our kind of footage. So you can imagine uh, the cost of trying to do a film on this scale. Uh, and we just simply couldn't afford to do it. But so I had to pick and choose what I could get and what uh, I, I chose to cover because of what I had. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.